Hi, I'm Steve Morgan, founder of Cybersecurity Ventures and editor-in-chief at Cybercrime Magazine. I'm here today with Gordon Lawson, CEO at NetAbstraction, developer of a patented cloud-based service that proactively prevents cyber attacks by disguising and varying your network pathways. To learn more about NetAbstraction, visit netabstraction.com. Also joining us is Dave DeWalt, Managing Director at Night Dragon, a venture capital firm investing in innovative growth and late stage companies in cybersecurity and related industries. To learn more about Night Dragon, visit nightdragon.com. Gordon, great to have you back with us again. It's been a few months. Thanks, Steve. Pleasure to be here. Dave, great to catch up with you as well. Yeah, great to see you again. Thank you. We got to do this in person next time, don't we? We do. So we're ready to move out of the virtual realm for sure. So, Gordon, you recently joined NetAbstraction as CEO. Congratulations. Great company. Great opportunity. For anyone who may not be familiar with the company, give us the 30,000-foot view. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Steve. Well, uh, super honored to, uh, to be here. Um, NetAbstraction, we have roots with our founding in the intelligence community. And our goal is really to bring some of those techniques. Uh, obfuscation is, is a large piece of that. Uh, into the the corporate realm and be able to secure enterprises by applying uh, those different techniques. So at NetAbstraction, we do that in in a couple different ways, but uh, fundamentally, we apply an obfuscation layer uh, at the network, and we can use that to do things like malware-protected browsing for OSINT teams, all the way up to threat intelligence sandboxes for uh, security operations teams. Uh, But all of the, the products that we offer have that layer to be able to disguise the entity uh, from threat actors to make it much harder to find. And our mantra is if they can't find you, they can't attack you. So Dave, in addition to Night Dragon, you're a managing director at Allegis Capital who recently led NetAbstraction's $9 million Series A round. You've advised and uh, invested into some of the most respected brands in cyber. What attracted you and Allegis to NetAbstraction? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, we've tried to create a, uh, a series of principles around when and why we invest. And it's a simple little analogy. I call it the three T's. But uh, the way we look at it in a simple way is we look for, you know, the best technology we can, the first T, right? Mature technology. And while net abstraction as a company is a relatively um, young company, you know, with a Series A-like round, it's actually a much more mature company from a technology standpoint than you might believe because having had its roots in the government and being able to work with the intelligence community and missions and operations, it had to be an incredibly scalable product. So it's not your normal 1.0, 2.0 products. It's a very mature product. So the first T in technology was real good checkbox. It's a, it's a platform It's not a small P product. It's a big P platform. It's got great technology. It scales well, and it's ready for prime time from a go-to-market point of view. The the second T that we we like is this whole concept of team. And, of course, you know, we feel like we've got an incredible team of executives, especially with Gordon now being at the helm as CEO, which was one of our, our requests, was to bring in a very professional CEO to help drive us to the next level. We've got Gordon to do that, but we also have great technologists around Gordon and teams there. So feel really good about that. And then the last one, and probably the most important one of the three T's is what I call the TAM, right? The total addressable market. Yeah, we look for big platform ideas, strong teams to execute, and a big total addressable market. And what's pretty unique here is this company has multiple applications and solution areas that it can provide large enterprises. It can go global with those applications and solutions on top of its platform, creating a very large total addressable network and and market. And so, you know, anytime you ask one CISO a question, you know, what's the main thing they're trying to do? Reduce their attack surface. This product reduces the attack surface. So it's a very powerful opportunity for the company. And you put those three T's together. We're excited to put the investment in and a long journey and hopefully a really successful outcome for net abstraction. So Gordon, I want to ask you some questions about the company. Before I do that, uh, 
to build on what Dave just shared uh, and the funding. What are you uh, expecting to do with that uh, investment? Is it for product development? It sounds like the company is already in a mature space, or is it mainly for sales and marketing? Yeah, no, great question, Steve. And it, it really is across the board. Um, I will say, I think that uh, net abstraction, as, as Dave alluded to, we have some amazing world-class clients, but a lot of the industry has never heard of us. So certainly marketing and sales is a, is a key piece of that. Um, and we also are continually maturing our product development and our engineering teams, and, and we're going to uh, hire aggressively for those in the coming months. So, so yeah, so it really is a across the board and a, and a balanced um, investment. So, Dave, I'm really curious. You joined the board of directors at Net Abstraction. Often the case uh, when you make an investment, uh, a lot of people know you. You've got a high profile background. The industry has a lot of affection for you and, and what you've done. What exactly do you do when you're on the board of directors? And in this case, with Net Abstraction. That's a good one, Steve. Yeah, no, I love that. I always like the analogy. It's a lot easier to tell another CEO what to do than do it yourself. And so I've, um, I really enjoy working with CEOs, to be honest. After, you know, 20 years of being a CEO, I always talk about my 17 years as a public company CEO and 68 public company quarters. It's like dog years when you're running companies in the public world. And uh, I kind of learned to be a good board member, good chairman type, to mentor executives and other CEOs and, and really be strategic. And that's really where my focus is. I don't tend to get into the little details of life. That's what the CEO does. I'd appreciate, you know, big picture strategies. What can we do to win the market? And you got to know your windows as companies. And when I say know your windows, like know what window you need to execute in so you can beat your competitors to that market. And it was sort of what I did at FireEye. We had five competitors when I first started FireEye, but we obliterated our competition, grew the company from 10 million to a billion in a three year period because I knew I had a window I could execute in where we were really just a go to market problem versus a technology problem. And that's what I see here with net abstraction, quite frankly. I see technology there, and as I said, the team there, now it's a go-to-market problem. How do we create partnerships and customers and expand what we're doing? My favorite thing as a board member is to help with all that and uh, help make companies successful. So it's going to be a fun little journey. And, and by the way, I also love the mission side of what I do. I always say, you know, fun learning money and mission is always what I like. And I like to have fun. I like to learn a lot. Of course, make money for my shareholders, but I love the element of a mission to help the world and help governments uh, secure their capabilities, both defensively as well as, uh, you know, offensively when needed. And in this particular case, this product checks every one of those boxes. So excited to work with you, Gordon. Uh, thank you, Dave. That's awesome. So Gordon, Dave's not going to talk too much about himself. I know that, um, but... You know, I, I think for anyone who, who's not familiar, uh, Dave was the CEO uh, not only at FireEye, an executive chairman prior to that, uh, McAfee, and I've been following him for a long time. Dave, I think, you know, all the way back to Documentum when you were one of the most successful uh, CEOs in the industry, even though that was years back. So, Gordon, you know, what, what does it mean to you to have somebody like Dave uh, advising well, well, first of all, just the, the wealth of knowledge is amazing and, and the wisdom and being able to pick up the phone or text Dave and ask a question. You know, and I'll say, say that and I think this is really practical being in my shoes now as a new CEO is, you know, one of the most important things we do is build out our advisory board and talk to CISOs. Um, some, sometimes a CISO who I may not know very well it isn't necessarily going to return my call. But when I say that Dave DeWalt is on our board, the, the probability of that call being returned goes up quite a bit. And, you know, I mean, it, it really is amazing. And I think the other thing is for me, um, Dave and I were just in a, in, in a meeting that I can't talk too much about um, just, just a couple weeks ago. And just the, um, the way that he connects the dots on trends, not only in cyber, but across national security, across public policy, um, to see that and to see how we can apply our technology to those realms and really solve fundamental business problems. I think that's, that's very, very interesting and helpful to us too, to be able to set a strategy, strategy that's very successful for the company. 
So Dave, I want to read a quote uh, from you in Net Abstraction's press release because I think it's so fundamental to the company. Uh, Net Abstraction is making technical solutions once only available to the intelligence community accessible to enterprises. Now, she's not here today, but uh, the founder of the company, Barbara Hunt, has an extremely impressive background. She spent more than 22 years at the CIA, four years at the NSA, and many of uh, today's top cybersecurity CEOs come out of the military. So tell us about that dynamic, Dave. Yeah, I always fly. I think that's a great uh, quote and a, and a great comment because what we've continued to learn, at least in terms of my, my strategy as a, as a CEO prior and now my strategy as an investor is I always say, win the government, win the market. And I've had that philosophy for you know over 20 years as a CEO. In my documentum days, Dave, you know, I, I tried to win the agency, win the market, and then influence agencies to influence the industry they govern, FDA, EPA, et cetera. Or when I was CEO of McAfee, I tried to win the intelligence community, Department of Defense, and then critical infrastructure from there. Because in the world of cyber, like you say, you know, so much of the public-private partnership is connected because it takes a village to solve these problems. And there's such immense problems that we're working on. And so that when the government, when the market, when you think about net abstraction, I mean, this is a mission critical area of the market. It had mission critical operators that are the founders of this company. They understand government. They understand how to win the government. They understand how to then apply that to a commercial area of critical infrastructure. And so a big part of the problem that you're trying to solve as a CEO or as an investor is already here as a young company where they've won large government contracts and large missions that are important to that relationship. So, you know, this is this is the dream that you have when you see a company and uh, they've already solved it. And like I said, it's a very mature company for still being what would be recognized as a young brand in the cyber market. So, Gordon, you know, you, you've been, you know, one of the more impressive CEOs our firm has worked with in the media because you really, really, from a technical perspective, get it. Um, you know, we've worked with you in the past around cyber range technology. So in addition to be able to execute in the market, you, you have a deep understanding. So break it down for us a little bit. Network obfuscation. So if a board member, if a C-suite executive, possibly even a CISO, doesn't completely understand what that is, you know, give, give us a, a clear picture. Right. So I'll, I'll just go, go from a high level here, Steve, because I know that the, the folks that are making decisions in these companies, they're, they're inundated with technologies and, it, and it, gets, it gets very complicated. I think a couple of things here. Think about us as the, as the nexus of, of SASE, zero trust and cloud security. Uh, we're, we're touching all of those areas by obfuscating the network. When we say obfuscating the network, um, we can do that at the individual employee level by making it easier for them to not make it as clear where their IP address or their geographic location is, or what browser they're on, to hide that a bit. We can also make that uh, browsing session malware protected. You know, one in 13 attacks come through a, a browsing session. So we will actually spin up VMs that, that won't be tied back to the company, totally, totally separate environment, and, and folks can, can, can go about their work and you know, be, be more confident that things like ransomware are not going to affect um, their day-to-day their, their -day business continuity. So, so that's one way we do it. Also, if you think about the workflow of a security operations team, I think one thing that I've found selling and working with a lot of the Global 2000 is that you, know, you have some very smart reverse engineers, instant responders, threat researchers that are out there, and especially in a COVID environment, they're working remotely. They set up their own infrastructure that is frankly vulnerable to threat actors. And it's almost like the bigger the company, the more of these folks that are out there setting up their own infrastructure, doing investigations on the threats that are affecting the company. We view that as a, as a fundamental liability um, that, that needs to be addressed. And so what we do at NetAbstraction is we can set up an environment where those teams can use their tools that they like to use, but it is a controlled, obfuscated environment. It will never be tied back either to that company or to NetAbstraction. So it's anonymized and um, it allows folks to, to do their workflow, to do those investigations, but also protects the company because now they have a chain of custody 
and a forensic trail, and they know that the environment is secured. So those are just kind of two use cases that, that we think are crucial to today's environment and really are not being addressed. Um, and we do all of this based on our network, which is, has seven patents associated with it, where you can pick your ingress and egress nodes, highly customizable, um, has much more hops than commercial VPNs, which are another another uh, source of vulnerability, which has been well publicized recently. So, so there's a way for really, I think, any company to ingest net abstraction, where that's at the individual level, at the SOC level, at the network level. In our mission, and really, I feel like my my fundamental goal um, as we as we take the company to market more aggressively, is to make it easier for for our customers to really um, use the product and to expand their use of the product through different different easy to use use cases. So Dave, we recently had your partner Ken Gonzalez on with us and he, he's fantastic. I mean, if, if he wanted to be a market analyst, he could. He broke the market down for us and let me just summarize by saying cybersecurity is absolutely on fire. Uh, anybody who questions that, listen to Ken on the podcast. And one of my takeaways, even though we track the market, Dave, just how many new companies are pushing in. I mean, there are so many new market entrants right now in the cybersecurity space. So when you look at a company uh, like NetAbstraction or others, you know, in a similar situation, what's most important in terms of market execution? It's a great question. By the way, uh, I completely agree with Ken Gonzalez. I mean, I think he's forgot more than most people know about <laughs> the security industry, every vendor in it, every category in it, the trends in it. And I'm lucky to have him. He is uh, amazing. I've worked with him for 14 years now and uh, really enjoy that as, as I do the rest of the Night Dragon family. But to answer your question, Steve, what do, you, what do you see happening here in my 20 years of being in cyber? I, I call them these cyber super cycles, right? And the cyber super cycles are really driven by the threat landscape. Every time you see a major uh, thrust or inertia of new threats, you see a customer spending cycle right behind the threat and right behind the customer spending cycle, you see an investment spending cycle, investing in the new companies. And you think about viruses and Trojans and worms when I was CEO of McAfee and quantity attacks that were everywhere and the rise of antivirus and the rise of solutions like that. And then you watch these quality-based attacks, APTs as they're called, where the Chinese military or other nation states were very precise and targeted and we rose another spending cycle during that. And now we're in this IP war, we're in this information war, we're in this uh, ransomware war, we're in this you know disinformation campaign war in ways that have driven the threat landscape to even another height. 2020 was the single highest threat environment we've ever seen. It's driving another customer spending cycle, another expansion, significant expansion of the cyber universe. And, you know, you know, very ominously, I like to say it's a, you know, never ending problem that, you know, is going to be around for a long time. But to come back to net abstraction for 10 more seconds is I see a mission critical piece of software here. What Gordon said were great use cases, but I also believe, and having run security companies, every single security company should use net abstraction. Because if you're updating customers with your indicators of compromise or your detection capabilities, and you don't obfuscate where you're coming from and how you're updating every single customer, you know, at McAfee, I'd update 200,000 customers with a DAT. Or at FireEye, thousands and thousands of mission critical customers, including government customers with my indicator of compromise or my sandbox updates. Well, if you're not obfuscating where that comes from and where it's going to, guess what the bad guys know? Where it's coming from and where it's going to. And you think about solar winds and these attacks now, and you think about the market requirement for a product like this to obfuscate just security updates, as well as red team uh, attacks that are going on, good guys trying to create understanding of the attack surface. This product just becomes requirements for you know, these types of operations, not to mention, my opinion, every single web and cloud gateway should have an abstraction layer in front of it so that you can reduce the attack surface because the biggest vulnerability 
Steve, is the idea of what's called SIPs or source IPs. And because you actually have a anchored IP and everybody can figure out your IP address, all you have to do is look up a domain name resolution. I can find out the domain name and IP address. And if I don't start to try to obfuscate that and reduce that attack surface, it becomes a problem. So any way you can use technology like this to, to solve that SIP problem and solve that gateway and solve that security updating problem, that's why it's a lot of cool applications and a big platform coming. So Gordon, I wonder if you can verticalize what Dave just shared, maybe give us some context around the industries that you focus on and maybe even give us, you know, one or two industries and, you know, specific examples uh, of uh, how net abstraction can help. Yeah. So uh, obviously financial services, uh, we have several clients there. That's a, a large piece for us. Uh, we do work in the government as well the insurance industry. So the, the, you know, you think about those core global 2000 verticals, but, but the great thing about the company is we're, we're vertical agnostic. Uh, if you have, just as Dave said, if you're a security company, if you have more than a hundred employees, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're a threat. You're, you're, you you can be, you're, you're definitely a target by the, for the threat actors. There's a way for, for any company to be able to take a piece of our abstraction layer, our obfuscation layer and implement that in a, in a cost-effective way that's appropriate to that organization. Um, so, you know, just a couple, a couple of kind of use cases. Um, in addition to the network obfuscation layer, we also do some things around identity management. Let's say you're a large multinational and you want to um, procure some cloud infrastructure, but you don't want it to be tied back to your company. That's, that's something that we can provide through our network. Um, I talked about some of these other ones, but let's, let's say that you're, you, you do have a team that gets the latest and greatest uh, threat intel from another provider. Your team needs to analyze what, what has infiltrated the network, but you don't want to tip off the threat actors that you're doing that analysis. We can provide that that environment to do that, and I think the other piece this that's really really important. I think um, folks lose sight of. You know, I spent time in the in the fishing industry, the anti fishing industry. Um, the social engineering that is going on is getting more sophisticated and even more dangerous than it's ever been. It's certainly a cause of many of the ransomware attacks. So if if folks that work in industry think that they're hiding um, effectively. I think the chances are they're wrong. There needs to be another layer here, another technical layer, and that's what we can provide to give them that anonymity to be able to effectively perform their duties because these threat actors are sophisticated. They're gonna find out where you work and whether that's LinkedIn or other sources or other OSINT, it, 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 there's too much information out there to be able to, um, to, to hide from that moving forward. So Dave, before we wrap up today, I have to ask you about the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. You know, it, it feels like we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. How has the pandemic affected cybersecurity startups uh, over the past 18 months? And where are they now in making this shift uh, and hopefully uh, emerging to whatever that new norm is? Yeah, boy, when you look back over the last 15, 16 months and you sort of just pontificate all the things that occurred, you're, you're sort of amazed. It feels like it was five years and not 15 months. And, you know, what a crisis we all went through around the world. I, I sit on the board of Delta Airlines and, you know, we were doing extremely well leading up to March 8th and suddenly we shut down the airline and put it to sleep for, you know, 12 months. And, you know, what a crisis we had during that pandemic. But what's amazing is in adversity is the test of true leadership is a great old adage. And to your point, you know, what did we watch happen? We watched companies with great leadership. We watched companies who understood the direction of the market do incredibly well. And we watched ones who perhaps had bad leadership or couldn't see where the future was do poorly. So it was kind of like a two halves kind of thing. And, you know, we watched for the first time in 2020, uh, two companies reach in excess of $50 billion market caps in the cyberspace. We watched several companies with three, four hundred percent growth in their public market valuations. We watched more IPOs than we'd seen uh, in any single year happen during the pandemic. We watched, you know, more threats and more 
uh, challenges in our elections and solar winds and ransomware. And all this drove companies up that were good at what they do. And, you know, that is what the silver lining was all about in my mind was the uh, opportunity for cyber companies to succeed that had great leadership. And we watched that and great product vision. And, um, you know, here we are with another company that we're talking about today, a net abstraction, who I think has that same opportunity. Where is the future going? Where is the next set of problems? What have the attackers learned during this crisis? And where is the problem going to be tomorrow? That's what I love to invest in. That's what I love to be a part of. And uh, that's why I'm sitting here with Gordon and you today. So fun. Thanks for having me. Well, I appreciate the two of you uh, coming on with us. Uh, you know, we're excited about Net Abstraction. We've been following the company. We have a lot of uh, Fortune 500 and Global 2000 CISOs who are watching. So thank you both. And I hope you'll come on again. Thanks, thank Steve. Appreciate it. I'm Steve Morgan, founder of Cybersecurity Ventures and editor-in-chief at Cybercrime Magazine. Joining us today was Gordon Lawson, CEO at NetAbstraction, developer of a patented cloud-based service that proactively prevents cyber attacks by disguising and varying your network pathways. To learn more about NetAbstraction, visit netabstraction.com. Also joining us was Dave DeWalt, Managing Director at Night Dragon, a venture capital firm investing in innovative growth and late-stage companies in cybersecurity and related industries. To learn more about Night Dragon, visit nightdragon.com. You can keep up with all of our media at cybercrimemagazine.com.